Hey, it's Ashley, and I'm back with some more Marry My Husband, the web novel. Uh, last we left, we found out that um, Jiwon has figured out that there were people around her that were protecting her, but because she was always focused on her fake BFF and her pathetic boyfriend, she didn't notice. But now that she's on her second round of life, she's figured out that there are people that care about her and she's seeing more and more how manipulative and selfish her supposed lover and other half are. So we're going to start with chapter 11 and it's a big world with many scumbags. This is true. It's very true. Upon returning home, Jiwon showered, then she turned on her phone. 58 missed calls and 32 texts. One text and two calls were from Suman. The rest were all from Minwon. Where are you? When are you coming out? Turn on your phone. Are you seriously going to be like this? Why are you suddenly acting this way? Is there someone else? Ji Hyuk Yu? Jiwon wrinkled her brow at the last text. She had been with Ji Hyuk. How did Minwon know that? And why was he asking if she was with another man? Bzz. Her phone suddenly vibrated. Her thumb slipped and she accidentally answered the call. Oh, damn. Hello? Jiwon? Where are you? Minwon sounded like he was barely suppressing his anger. Jiwon swallowed and moved her phone to her ear. I'm at home. When did you get home? I didn't see you come out of the building, he said. I came straight from the underground parking lot. Miss Yang said she'd give me a ride. Even though she had nothing to lie about, she lied anyway. Her gut told her to. I'll come up to your apartment. Let's talk. She flinched. Tell me over the phone. I feel a bit sick, so I'm going to sleep early. Minwan fell monetarily silent. Fine. Why did you give Ji Hyuk coffee earlier? Coffee? The coffee after lunch? You didn't you didn't usually give him coffee. Did he make you did he make all that fuss just because of that one drink? Apparently, since Minwan was a cheater, he thought everyone else must be. She inhaled slowly. It was a smoothie, not a coffee. He bought me coffee because I got here early today, so I was repaying the favor. Why would that bastard get you coffee? We were the only two people in the office, she replied. Would you have just gotten your own coffee if you were in that situation? Minwan shut his mouth. He probably didn't have anything else to say. He knew how things worked in the office. Jiwon glanced at her phone and sighed. Why did you get to work early? You didn't say anything about that to me. He really wanted to pick a fight. <sighs> yes, he does. I went in early because I woke up early. What a pointless conversation. Jiwon refrained from telling him she wanted to break up, though. It wasn't time yet. Minwon needed to remain her boyfriend until Suman stole him. He had to appear perfect so Suman would desire him. Why did you turn your phone off then? Minwon demanded. You were angry at me earlier. I felt a bit dejected, Jiwon said in her most pitiful tone. Okay. Minwon audibly softened. It was worth faking a voice that made her insides turn. I'm going to sleep now. I'll see you at work. Good night. Oh, Jiwon. Hmm? I love you. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry, that's me. That's not Jiwon. <clears throat> Jiwon almost threw her phone. She couldn't bring herself to say me too. Instead, she closed her phone. Girl, thank you. I don't think she could have even, she, she would have barfed before she said it. In her past life, Minwon had never dis divorced her, even though he always verbally abused her. She had even prepared for a lawsuit, but Suman had convinced her not to. Suman said she'd probably lose it. Then Minwon had someone somehow found out, and her efforts ended futilely anyway, because of how much scary, because of how much scarier he acted. She was so stupid. She'd believe Minwon acted that way because he cared for her too much. 
Now, looking back, she realized Min Wan was only protecting his pride. There was no way nice, shabby, foolish Ji Wan could be allowed to abandon tall, handsome, sharp Min Wan. He could break things off, but Ji Wan wasn't allowed to. What shitty pride. Her husband in his her past life was a piece of dog shit. Wait, no. Technically, dog shit was better than him. At least he could be used as fertilizer. At least it could be used as fertilizer. <laughs> Jiwon flopped onto her bed. The one unread message from Suman waited on her phone. Why is your phone off? I'm upset that you didn't message me much. You don't message me much anymore, my other half. We've been so distant. You know I still love you, right? I'm worried. Call me when you see this. I don't think so, bitch. <laughs> Were you ever genuine? Jiwon buried her face in her pillow, still holding her phone. I won't ever believe in anyone again. Then she caught herself. I'll believe in myself. After all, I came back to the past. She laughed as she said it out loud. There's something to be ang there's nothing to be anxious or scared about. I've already died once. That's right, girl. The day exhausted her more than usual. Jeron pushed herself into the hellishly overcrowded subway. People stood as close as stalks of bean sprouts in a pod. She needed to get home quickly and make dinner. Give her daughter Yonji a bath and prepare her for her daycare tomorrow. Time was tight. Plus, she hadn't finished the proposal she needed to submit by tomorrow either. I'm home, she called when she stepped through the door. Mom! Yonji toddled towards, forward and clutched Jiron's legs. It was the happiest moment of her day. Aw, my baby! Were you waiting for me? Jiron held Yonji tight and walked into the living room. Jaehyun Lee, who was lying on the sofa watching a show, didn't even turn around as he spoke. Why are you so late? I thought I was going to die from hunger. You should have fixed yourself something since I'm late. Juran put down Yeonji for a moment. She hung her jacket on a hanger and set her handbag down. Seeing the blankets in the same rumpled position she'd left them, she sighed. I'll make dinner. Can you give Yeonji a bath? She's a mess. Bathing Yeonji was the only thing Jaehyun knew how to do in the household. He would only do it when Joran asked, and he grumbled the entire time. Joran had to clean up after him, too. What the fuck? <laughs> He's more of a toddler than his own damn daughter. I watched her the entire day. I'm late for my dinner plans. Give Yeonji a bath and eat by yourself, he said. What? She didn't realize it earlier because the sofa was in the in the way, but after coming into the living room, she saw Jaehyun wearing clothes for a night out. Where are you going now? I told you, I'm late to dinner plans. I have a friend who recently changed jobs. I'm going to listen what he has to say. You said that the last time you went out. Jaehyun ignored Joran and put his shoes on. How many times are you going out every week? Can't you see I'm tired? I just came home from work, she crossed her arms. You think you're the only one working? I'm also tired. I applied for jobs during the day and I picked up Yonji and watched her all afternoon. Why is she in this state if you watched her? Her hair is exactly as I tied it th this morning. Her diapers haven't even been changed either. <laughs> you're always nagging. This is why I'm leaving. Jaehyun shouted and stormed out. Joran followed him to the front door. Hey, at least give Yonji a bath before leaving but her voice echoed in the hallway as the elevator door swung shut. Jaehyun quit work less than three months after Joran became pregnant with Yeonji. He did it without saying a word to Joran. He said he was going to move to a company with a higher salary now that they had a child. But since then, he stayed at home and goofed around. That was all he did, aside from picking Yeonji up from daycare in the evening and feeding her baby food that Joran prepared in advance. Oh my god. On the rare days he bathed Yonji, he bragged about it endlessly. He never helped around the house, claiming he didn't know how to do anything. He went out for drinks or to an internet cafe at least four times a week. Some nights he did both. Mom! Mom! Yonji reached for Joran, who stood there blankly. Yes, I'm here, my pretty little baby. Joran hunched over and hugged Yonji. Jaehyun 
hadn't even changed her clothes after picking her up from daycare. A sour smell rose from her. She also had baby food smeared under her chin. You need a bath. Let's go play with your rubber ducks. Joran filled the baby bathtub with water and placed Yonji in, into it. She bathed the thrashing Yonji, who didn't want her hair washed. When Joran finished, beads of sweat stood out on her forehead. Her entire body was covered in soapy water. Although she was hungry, she wanted to take a shower first. However, since Jae Hyun wasn't there, she could only wash her face while Yonji played with her ducks. After the battle-like bath, she needed to take care of chores. Joran sighed at the sight of the pot of ramyun cups and open containers of side dishes stacked in front of the computer. The leftover baby food from Yonji's dinner still waited on the dinner table. <sighs> he should have at least cleaned up after himself. Joran had begged him several times already not to eat in front of the computer and to put dishes away in the sink after he ate. He didn't even ask, she didn't even ask him to wash the dishes, but he still couldn't handle that much. Joran ate the remaining baby food for dinner and gathered the empty plates to wash. She collected the toys laying around and placed them into a box. The floor was sticky for some reason, so she wiped it clean. Even ten hands couldn't take care of everything. The last time Joran had slept for more than five hours in a row, she was in the postnatal care center giving birth to Yonji. One year, oh, one year ago already. Oh my God. So he quit his job three months into her even finding out she was pregnant. The baby's a year. So he hasn't had a job for almost two years. Because he didn't have one before the baby was even there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh man. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Mom, milk! Sure, here's your milk. Joran didn't even have the chance to feel tired. She poured Yonji a cup of milk. Taking care of Yonji, doing housework, and setting out clothes to wear to work tomorrow... Joran moved around busily, not able to sit down. Once as the clock ticked past nine, soon it was time to put Yonji to sleep. Let's turn off the lights and go to sleep. I'll help you. Joran carried Yonji to the bed and opened a fairy tale book. The end of fairy tales was always the same. The princess married the prince and they lived happily ever after. When she was young, Joran thought she would become happy after getting married. That was how it worked in the fairy tales, but no fairy tale explained what happened after the princess married and had children. And so the princess and the prince married and lived happily ever after, she murmured. Reality wasn't a fairy tale. Joran shut the book and listened to Yonji breathe. Her body felt as heavy as cotton soaked in water. How nice would it be to lie down and sleep until noon tomorrow? Even a few seconds felt like a luxury. With a sigh, Joran carefully tiptoed into the leering room and opened her laptop. Wah! Wah! Before she could open her proposal, Yonji started crying. I'm here. Joran hurried back and laid down next to Yonji. A nice scent eman emanated from the baby now. She looked exactly like Joran. Yonji clutched Joran with her baby hands. Mom! Mom! I'm here. Close your eyes and sleep, okay? After that, Yonji woke up three more times. Twice she stirred herself awake. But the third time, she awoke surprised at a drunk Jaehyun stumbling in. Oh, God. Joran barely managed to finish the proposal and shut her notebook. She was so tired that she bent over her laptop, unable to move. Red fluid suddenly dripped onto her white laptop. A nosebleed. She didn't have the strength to go to the bathroom. She just blocked her nose with tissues and fell asleep on the sofa. It was four in the morning. <gasps> Mom! Mom! I'll be back. I'll come home soon, Yonji. 
Joran left Yonji, who was crying more than normal, with the daycare teacher. She hurried off to work. Thankfully, she caught the subway and arrived on time. Mr. Kim, here's the proposal for the products that were being renewed. Hmm, leave it there. Jiong-uk didn't even glance at the proposal. Joran had given herself a nosebleed to finish it, but she decided to think positively. He hadn't thrown it aside, at least. But soon, her optimism soured. Joran, come to my desk right now. As soon as Ju Ji Hyuk left, ugh, Jion Uk's short range shout rang through the office. Does this look like a proposal to you? Are you going to turn in work this shabby? Yeon Uk slammed the documents on the ground. There was a saying that a fox would act like the king in a cave without a tiger. His obnoxious behavior had no limits. Mr. Kim, if you could tell me which sections are wrong, Joran murmured. Do I look like I have time to teach you that? How long have you worked here? You still can't write a proper proposal? You lost your touch after taking vacation at home with your kid, huh? Joran lowered her head like a repentant sinner. Jeon Uk always acted awful, but he'd gotten worse lately. I'm sorry. I'll revise it and bring it back. Revise? Do you think this can be solved by a revision? Yeon Uk brought his fist down on the desk with a thud. Rewrite it from the beginning and have it on my desk by tomorrow morning. How can a section head chief do worse than a new employee? She'd have to work overtime now. No doubt Yeonji would be left to play alone in dirty clothes all weekend while Jae Hyuk watched TV or played video games. Her heart was wretched. Joran picked up the scattered documents and headed for the break room. She needed to drink some sugary instant coffee to get through the day. Miss Yang! Jiwon followed her and lightly touched her arm. Do you want some coffee, Miss Kang? You know I'm the barista around here, Joran joked half-heartedly. Jiwon took, shook her head and led Joran to sit down. I'll make your coffee. Cold and sweet, right? Wow, you're making me a coffee? What a surprise. Jiwon was the quietest person. Sorry. Jiwon was the quietest person in the, their office. She never spoke except for necessarily work-related conversations. She always ate alone, too. Joran had never seen Jiwon smile while Suman entered the company. <gasps> oh, okay. Joran never seen Jiwon smile until Suman entered the company. Jiwon had changed. However, Joran couldn't place her finger on how exactly, but it seemed like a good change. Of course, here, Jiwon set two cups of coffee on the table and sat opposite Joran. Miss Yang, about that proposal. The one Mr. Kim threw on the floor? Yes. After sipping her cold coffee, Jiwon glanced at the door and lowered her voice to a whisper. Don't rewrite it. And that's the end of chapter 11. Um, some top comments. Seeing all the details that the webtoon couldn't fit in the in is heartbreaking. I'm glad that Ji Wan de uh, decided to help Joran. Hopefully, in later updates, Joran will decide that it's better to be a single mom of one than to be a single mom of two. The second child being that useless man child. Exactly. Exactly. And then another comment said, Jiwon is right. Dog shit is way better than Minhwan, and Suman can be the plastic baggie that covers him as they both head into the garbage where they belong. And man, Joran's husband should go along with them. I concur. I hope Joran can get a better life this time around. Her husband is so awful, it's infuriating. It is. All right. So that's the end of chapter 11. Next on to chapter 12.
All right, and we're back with episode 12 of the Marry My Husband web novel. And chapter 12 is Since You're My Closest Friend. What are you talking about? Jaron asked, not understanding. Who, know, who knew what would happen if she didn't rewrite the proposal and have it on jong Uk's desk by tomorrow morning? You don't need to fix the contents, Jiwon said. Just change the fonts. Oh, and make the title two times bigger and bold. In Jiwon's memory, Joran had stayed alone all night to rewrite the proposal. Of course, that proposal was also returned. Returned was a nice way of putting it. To be frank, Jong Uk treated it as recyclable paper. He did the same thing with Joran's next proposal and her next. Joran rewrote the proposal four times, but when she printed the fourth proposal, she was so tired that she accidentally printed her first proposal instead. However, Yong Uk cleared that one. Now it looks usable. He'd never even read it, obviously. No way, Mr. Kim will throw a fit, Joran, having no way of knowing the future, crossed her arms and, shriv and shivered. Jiwon kept her composure. I was watching him. Mr. Kim didn't even read your proposal. Still, submitting the same one is a bit... Joran hesitated. Try it. He'll just say the same thing he did today. If he yells you, uh, yells you to rewrite it again, change the order of the contents. After that, change the color and font again. And then next Thursday, just resubmit the original proposal you gave him today. The proposal would be approved next Thursday. Why? Because when Ji Hyuk would be in the office all that all day, that mm, because then Ji Hyuk would be in the office all day. That and Yong Uk needed to send it to the higher ups by next weekend. Just trust me on this. If he throws a fit and says you didn't change anything, I'll rewrite the proposal for you. In your name, of course. Ji Won gripped Juran's hand tightly. It was a temporary solution to stop Joran from wasting her time. Joran looked at their clasped hands in surprise and then nodded. Okay, if he says something, I'll say I accidentally copied the wrong file. Joran was one step further from resigning. Still, she wasn't safe. If Joran didn't quit, someone else in the office would end up leaving. Jiwon would ensure that someone was Jung Uk. And here, take this. She handed Joran a plain flash drive with a small feature added. What is this? Materials for the proposal? A recording device, she said. Joran's eyes widened. A recording device? Why? Anytime Young Uk curses at you, record him. Joran examined the flash drive and sighed. Thanks for looking out for me, but I can't act that shamelessly. Mr. Kim suffered a lot of extra work while I was on parental leave. Who said Mr. Kim suffered? Jiwon asked, bewildered. While you were recovering, I took over half of your tasks. The other team members divided up the remainder. Mr. Kim? Sure. I suppose he suffered from throwing all those reports on the ground. Jaron blinked. He said he did everything since the other team members were busy. You got scammed. A simple conclusion. While Joran was away, they'd hired a temporary team member. However, the temp had fled after Gyeong Uk made advances on her. The rest of Joran's tasks fell to Jiwon. Her work was quick and accurate, so she always had more free time than others. Really? So that's what happened? I did think tanking on more work would be out of character for him. Joran furiously gulped her cold coffee. He must have thought you wouldn't say anything since you're so quiet. Probably. Pretend not to know anything for the time being. Keep recording him. It'll come in handy someday, Jiwon said. Joran hesitated. Jiwon had changed. She used to always look at a 45 degree angle when she spoke to others, but now she looked Joran straight in the eye, and her words carried a sure certain tone. Joran felt like everything would turn out fine if she listened to Jiwon. After long deliberation, Joran nodded again. Okay. How do I use this? Turn the switch to the right and it'll start recording. Move it to the left to save. If it runs out of battery, it'll save automatically. So don't worry. You can stick the flash drive into the computer to back up your recordings too. Ji once uh, went to Yong Sun Uni yesterday to buy this recorder. She had even tested it, so there was no need to doubt its capabilities. 
Oh, they about to take his ass down, and I'm so excited for it, because he's a little ass. The sun hung high in the afternoon sky. Ji Hyuk was gone, so Young Uk took it upon himself to shout, Let's continue after lunch. Ji Won realized he was copying Ji Hyuk. The thought reminded her of a cockroach flipped on its back. She shuddered. Let's go. You skipped breakfast again, didn't you? Min Won asked. Suman trailed behind him, smiling. Yeah. Oh, right. Miss Yu, Ji Won called Hu Yan's name loudly. Duran wasn't the only one being tormented by Yong Uk. As a matter of fact, he harassed Hu Yan even more. However, since Hu Yan was a new employee, the torment was less obvious. She couldn't speak with the manager yet either. Yes, Miss Kang? Hu Yan asked. Will you eat lunch with me? Miss Yang went out for work, didn't she? No one else acted friendly with Hu Yan because of Yong Uk's attitude. Hu Yan would eat a lunch alone if Juran was absent. Really? Can I eat with you? I'd love to eat with you. You're such an enthusiastic eater. I feel like my appetite grows when I watch you eat, Ji Won said. Hu Yuan clasped her hands together. I'll do my best to eat enthusiastically, my lifesaver. Suman's face crumpled. A second later, she caught it and plastered a smile, like plastered on her smile again. Lunch will be so delicious if we all eat together. Oh, you should eat with us too, Mr. Park. She bounced beside Min Wan, falling into step beside him. Ji Wan walked a few steps behind them with Hu Yan watching. Good job, bitch. Walk straight into hell in my place, Ji Wan inwardly cheered. Suddenly, Hu Yan whispered in her ear, Are you okay, Miss Lifesaver? Ji Wan looked at her. Hu Yan's eyes blazed with fury. What? Of course you'll say you're okay, but even if you say so, I won't stand here and do nothing. About what? Ji Wan blinked. Don't be upset. I'll get rid of her for you. Yu Yan strolled forward. Oh my gosh, Miss Jong, those pants are so pretty. Yu Yan bravely marched up and linked her arms through Suman's. As a result, Min Wan ended up alone, hovering awkwardly. What? My pants? Did she lose her mind? Why is she suddenly acting so friendly? Suman tried to remove her arm to no avail. Yu Yan's slender looking body was quite muscular from all the days she spent at the gym. They fit perfectly on you. I'm sure you had to get them hemmed, but I can't even tell. They must be made of fantastic material, Hu Yan grinned as she implied Suman's legs were short as heck. <laughs> Suman opened her mouth speechless. When she turned around, Min Wan was walking side by side with Ji Wan. I didn't get them hemmed. I just bought them like this. Oh, so they were originally capris? You choose well. <laughs> Hu Yan beamed and tightened her arm. It felt like she was trying to break Suman's forearm. Let me know when you go where you got them. Oh my goodness. There's got to, there's going to be so many people in the cafeteria. Let's hurry, Miss Kang, Mr. Park. We'll go save some good seats. <laughs> Hu Yan walked past her. Her arm still linked with Suman's. She exercised a lot and she was almost as tall as Jiwon. She dragged Suman along like a keychain. <laughs> <laughs> they get along so well, Min Wan grinned. He was clueless or just pretending. The fact that she didn't have to hold his hand because they were at work relieved Ji Wan. That's good. It's nice when the newbies get along. Yeah, we also became close when we first started. Ji Wan suppressed a shudder. Not long after she'd entered the company, Ji Wan forced herself to go to the new employee welcome party in an attempt to be more social. She didn't know a single person, and Ji Hyuk had seemed to glare at her all night. She froze up, but Min Wan took care of her, helping her adjust. You were also the youngest back then, he said. I was disappointed that the youngest employee was a woman, but it actually wasn't bad, and you looked like you would be good at work, so I felt a lot better. In other words, he charmed her because she looked like a pushover. Ji Wan mustered a smile and then walked into the cafeteria. Ji Wan and Min Wan filled their trays, then noticed Suman and Hu Yan waving. Mr. Park, Suman called Min Wan. Miss Kang, here. Hu Yan called Ji Wan. 
Jiwon and Minwon sat across from them. Jiwon hadn't looked forward to this lunch, but she needed to eat. As Jiwon half-heartedly raised her chopsticks, Hu Yuan said, Miss Kang, what are you doing this weekend? This weekend? Hmm. She had no idea what she'd done on a random weekend ten years ago. Jiwon wrinkled her brow and shook her head. Nothing in particular. Why? Great. Hu Yuan clapped. Let's go eat something yummy on Sunday. The Garasol area is famous these days. Garasogil. Garasogil? She'd seen the location mentioned often online. She'd never been there, and she'd never thought about visiting. Jiwon considered it for a moment and then nodded. Sure. Then, Jiwon, we made plans to hang out this week, Suman in interjected. Suddenly, Jiwon remembered this weekend, ten years ago. She went to a reunion with Suman a meeting for their high school classmates who'd settled in Seoul, of course. Jiwon wasn't on the list of attendees. Suman said she found a restaurant they needed to visit and Jiwon tagged along. It turned out to be the reunion. Everyone seemed taken aback by Jiwon turning up uninvited. There were 30 people there and only a handful even said hi to her. Jiwon had frantically tried to leave, but Suman had clutched her arm. Jiwon came too. She's my best friend. She should be here, right? Suman hadn't told her they were going to the reunion. If she'd known, Jiwon never would have, have tagged along. Jiwon had angrily admonished Suman for bringing her without explanation, but Suman had teared up. Sorry, you're my closest friend, so I thought we should come together. I didn't tell you because I thought you wouldn't come if I said it was a reunion. I'm really sorry. Just like always, Jiwon had softened at Suman's tears in the word friend. Amid their fancily dressed classmates, Jiwon sat alone in her nondescript jeans. She buried those two hours in her mind. However, there was one memory she couldn't erase. It was beyond exhausting sitting between classmates who seemed uncomfortable when she existed. On top of that, in Hobek, the boy she'd had a crush on in high school kept on glancing at her. Jiwon went to the bathroom. She spent nearly 10 minutes alone there. Just when she was about to leave, multiple people walked into the bathroom. Isn't she incredible? No one wants her here. Who does she think she is coming here? They mentioned no names, but the back of Jiwon's neck turned cold. Right? She probably begged Suman to take her along. That voice on the other hand, she recognized. How could she forget? It was Jehan who used to toss trash and erasers at Jiwon through the window when she walked by. Suman is so nice. She took of care of Jiwon, even though Jiwon made her suffer all throughout high school. Now she's still hanging out with her, even after getting a job. I would have cut her out of my life already. Someone Jiwon didn't know grumbled. Her legs trembled and her face turned red. She was going to cry. Everything felt wrong. She didn't even know this was a reunion, yet people were trash-talking her just for coming. I wouldn't have been friends with her in the first place. Suman suffered so much in high school because of her. G.A. scoffed. Wait, G.A., the first person who spoke suddenly lowered her voice. Jiwon left earlier. What if she went to the bathroom? Everyone stopped talking. Jiwon felt the dirty looks of her classmates through the door. Back then, Jiwon was a coward who didn't dare kick the door open and defend herself. L let's go. Where should we go after this? Her classmates left as quickly as they came in. Jiwon sat on the toilet for another 30 minutes after that. When she came outside, no one was there, not even Suman. Jiwon picked up her bag lying abandoned on a chair. She took two steps outside the restaurant when someone called her. Jiwon! She turned and saw Inho waiting. Jiwon hung her head and ran away as fast as she could. Her throat choked up. She was so embarrassed and miserable. She detested herself for still getting upset over things like this. And that's the end of chapter 12. Uh, really good. It's, I don't know if they're going to do the cafeteria scene. I, it's been a mile since I read the webtoon. I think it was in the webtoon. I don't know if it's going to be in the book or not, but I hope it is. Uh, and it seems like Unho did come to the reunion in this novel. 
unlike he did, unlike in the drama where he had to be convinced. But anywho, let's see what the comments say. Hugh Yeon roasting Suman, right, top tier. God, I wish that part about Hugh Yeon decimating Suman was in the webtoon. A better expression would have been priceless. Seriously, what do they have against Jiwon? She's boring. She's not as pretty as social or sociable as Suman. There's nothing wrong with her. How can people sit back in good conscience and pick apart a person who did nothing wrong just because it's funny to them? A lot of people do it. All right, so we're on to chapter 13. You're beautiful, Jiwon. Right. We did, Jiwon murmured after recalling the unpleasant memory. Suman beamed. Right. Let's go to the restaurant I've been keeping an eye on, Jiwon. I mean, Miss Kang. Their classmates would be gathered at the restaurant. Jiwon could imagine the scoffs, the hatred-filled gazes, and awkward hellos. It wouldn't happen if she refused to go. She wouldn't have to tremble behind the bathroom door while people gossiped about her. However, Jiwon didn't want to run away either. Miss Yu, she said. Yes, my lifesaver. Jiwon smiled. Let's postpone those Garosogil gar, plans. I already have plans with Suman on Sunday. Hu Yan's shoulders slumped, but she quickly perked up again. Then what about Saturday? I'm free on Saturday, too. Jiwon's spirits lifted as she watched Hu Yan sparkle. She laughed and nodded. Saturday's fine. Then Saturday at Garsogil, pinky promise. Hu Yuan shouted, holding her pinky finger out. Jiwon locked her fingers through Hu Yuan's and sealed the promise. Me too, me too. A restaurant with me on Sunday, pinky promise. Ew. Suman furatively pushed Hu Yuan aside and locked her fingers with Jiwon's. Jiwon also sealed the promise with her. I wouldn't have been friends with her in the first place. Suman suffered so much in high school because of her. Suman suffered? She bit back a scoff. This reunion wouldn't make her miserable this time. Jiwon would listen to everything her classmates had to say. As she should. Let's see. Should I really submit this or not? Joran rubbed the pages of, of the proposal. She had only changed the font and title as Jiwon had advised her. Even though she was hesitant, she saw no other option. She almost revised the proposal last minute out of anxiety, but then Jiwon poked her shoulder from behind. Miss Yang, the proposal. Oh, Miss Yang, the proposal. Gyeong Uk bellowed. Joran collected her bearings and gathered the documents. Here is the new version of the proposal. Gyeong Uk flipped through the pages. Joran swallowed nervously. What the heck are you doing? When John Uk lifted his face again, his expression, his expression resembled a crushed can of soda. <laughs> Just as Joran regretted everything, thinking she should have rewritten it. You call this a, pro this a proposal? It's worse than the last one. Even a middle schooler could write better. The papers Jung Uk tossed hit Joran's forehead and scattered in the air. No way it was worse than the last one. It was the same exact proposal, just with a different font and title. Joran stared at Young Uk incredulously. Jiwon was right. What, you got a problem? Young Uk barked, spitting. He mistook her expression for dissatisfaction. Quit if you have a problem. Just quit and stay in the kitchen at home if you don't want to work. Why do you keep coming to work and being a nuisance? Does your husband not earn enough money? Or was he fired, huh? Juran looked down. She studied the letter-sized paper scattered next to her worn heels. She worked at a large company, but after paying for her family's apartment, as well as repaying loans, Juran could always put off buying things like new shoes. I have to endure it, even if I die. It'll be at work. Even if I die, it'll be at work. Joran hunched over and silently gathered the papers. I'll redo it, Mr. Kim. Do it properly. If you bring a pile of crap again, I'm not responsible for how I react. Even if the proposal really had been crap, Young Uk wouldn't have noticed. It was pathetic for him to shout like some kind of authority when he didn't even take care of his own work. I'll take care of it now, sir. 
Joran organized the documents and turned around. The other employees who had been watching with bated breath turned to furiously tapping their keyboards. Miss Yang, Jiwan approached Joran and tapped her on the shoulder. She pointed at the break room, silently, silently suggesting coffee. Joran peeked at Jun Yong Uk and headed for the break room. A sweet, cold coffee, right? Jiwan pulled out two cups and rustled up some coffee. Joran sat with her chin resting in her hands as she watched Jiwan. Thank you, Miss Kang, she said quietly. Hm? For the coffee? The coffee, too, but you saved me from a huge waste of time. Although she'd still been humiliated afterwards, but that wasn't Jiwan's fault, Joran smiled at her. She was a strong person, or maybe someone who had had to be strong. Please just hang on a little bit longer, Jiwan thought as she handed Joran her coffee, sitting opposite. Don't take Mr. Kim's heart to rant. He always speaks before thinking. I didn't take it to heart. I took the recording, though. Joran patted her pocket. About the proposal, he really didn't have any idea. I guess he didn't read it at all. Right. Or maybe he didn't like the font. <laughs> Joran covered her mouth with her hand as she laughed at Jiwan's joke. Then she paused. This was the first time she'd heard Jiwan joke. They had never even spoken about personal matters in the years they'd worked together, let alone crack jokes. Jiwan, you seem like a different person these days. A different person? she asked. Just, you seem a bit friendlier. Anyway, it's much better than before. Jiwan grinned and sipped her coffee again. Observing her with satisfaction, Joran extended a hand and touched Joran's and touched Jiwan's long hair. Now that I look at it, you have nice hair. I think it'd look pretty if you got a perm. A perm? Jiwan blinked. You always wear your hair in a tight ponytail. I'm not saying you look weird, but after getting married and having a child, I realized something. There's a kind of dressing up you can only do when you're pretty and young, like you, Jiwan. Jiwan agreed with that. Those with experience dressing up obviously did it better. Jiwan had no idea how to dress herself up. She always just straightened her hair with a flat iron and tied it up in a ponytail. She couldn't obtain knowledge she didn't have just by embarking on a new life. I'll think about getting one. Really? I look forward to seeing it. Jiwan looked away. Joran's expectant eyes were too much. Just then, the door opened and Hu Yian entered with a playful pout. You two are drinking coffee by yourselves? Hugh Yian had an effortless office look. With her flowy long hair and light makeup, it suited her, and she looked pretty. Jiwan felt a little jealous. Where do you get your hair done, Miss Yu? Jiwan found herself asking. Hugh Yian brightened. Miss Kang, you're going to do your hair? There's a salon I've been going to for five years now. Do you know, want the name? They're affordable and really good. Joran chimed in. That's great. Miss Kang said she's getting a perm. Oh, really? That's perfect. It's actually about time for me to get my hair done, too. Let's go to the salon and then eat something delicious over the weekend. Oh, right. Do you want to come, too, Miss Yang? Hu Yian smiled. I have to take care of the baby, but you two ladies should go. Then Joran shook her head, saying she shouldn't. She should get back to work. Jiwan and Hu Yian lingered, discussing the salon they would go to together. What's trending these days? I've never had a perm. The hair designer there will come up with a look that suits you. If you come with me, I can probably get you a discount even, Hu Yian beamed. Really? Miss Yu, I'll buy you something I'll buy you something super yummy. Ju Yuan opened the door while looking back at Hu Yian. In doing so, she almost crashed into a large shadow. She stepped back in surprise. Ji Hyuk. You two. Jiwan and Hu Yian excused themselves. Ji Hyuk looked at them dryly. Are you going somewhere this weekend? Why is he asking? Ji Jiwan wrinkled her forehead. Hu Yian cleared her throat. We're going to Garselgil. Why do you ask? Ji Hyuk's eyes narrowed before his horn rim behind his horn rim glasses. Garselgil? Yes, if you don't have any work orders, we'll leave now. Ji Hyuk opened his mouth, but Hu Yian dragged Ji Wan out and shut the door. Some people disliked Ji Hyuk because of how fussy and indifferent he acted. Ji Wan assumed Hu Yian must be one of them. She didn't think any more of it. 
On a Saturday morning, Jiwon visited an optical store. After receiving an eye examination, she got contact lenses. For the first time in her life, it was harder than she thought it would be to wear the contacts. Somehow, she managed to put them in her eyes. The world looked a lot clearer though, through her contacts, though, than through her smudged glasses. Without the frames always in her peripheral vision, even the sky seemed larger. In high spirits, Jiwon entered a cafe and ordered an iced Americano. She sat on the terrace watching people go by. Suddenly, she regretted her life. She'd only ever saved her money. She'd never known how to use it. In the end, she died in a tattered cardigan. Jiwon propped her chin in her hand and bit her straw. The cold and bitter Americano traveled down her throat. As she stirred the cup, Hugh Yeon appeared in a flurry of an of exuberance. Miss Kang, you're wearing contacts. You look so pretty. It's like you're a different person. Hugh Yeon was dressed comfortably in a jeans and in a t-shirt with a shoulder bag slung over one arm. She looked even livelier than she did at work. Jiwon remembered she was only 25. Are contacts better? It's my first time wearing them. Of course, even famous actresses look prettier in contacts than glasses. Hugh Yeon winked. Jiwon suddenly thought of Ji Hyuk. That goes for men, too. I saw Mr. Yu without his glasses last week. He looked a lot more handsome without them. What? Hugh Yeon seemed appalled, but Jiwon hadn't said anything special. Why are you so surprised, Miss Yu? N no reason. Mr. Yu, hmm? Sure. Anyway, my lifesaver. Hugh Yeon smiled slyly. Let's go. I have a lot of plans for today. Jiwon carried her coffee as she followed Hugh Yeon to the salon. The stylist welcomed Hugh Yeon warmly as she burst through the door. You're here, Hugh Yeon. Is this your friend who also made a reservation? My supervisor at work. She's the person I like the most in the office. The person she likes the most. It felt strange, but not in a bad way. Your hair is really healthy, so a perm will come out well, the stylist said as she sat Jiwon in front of a mirror. How would you like it done? A wavy perm or an S-curl perm? Wavy perms, S-curl perms, Jiwon had no idea what those words meant. Just a style that you think would suit me. Okay, a perm that'll suit you, the stylist declared. She began to style Jiwon's hair. Hugh Yeon sat next to her and spread a magazine on her knees. It took a whopping two hours to finish the perm. Hugh Yeon said that it was faster than usual. Doing the whole dress up while you're young thing was exhausting. Still, now she could speak comfortably to Hugh Yeon. Chattering for two hours straight was a good way to get friendlier with someone. It looks so good, Miss Kang. The curls came out really nice. It looks great from all directions. Hugh Yeon touched Jiwon's hair. Next to her, the stylist shrugged proudly. I wish we could do your makeup too. Your skin is super clear and your eyelashes are so long. You'd be so pretty with just a little makeup. Hugh Yeon caught Jiwon's eye in the mirror, her own eyes sparkling. Three minutes later, Jiwon found herself in a makeup room filled with all kinds of cosmetics and tools. All the fluffy brushes fluttered over her cheeks. Jiwon's face began to change. Shadows appeared with contour. Liveliness flushed her cheeks and her eyes became deeper. When the stylist finished her makeup with a sw swipe of coral-colored lipstick, Hugh Yeon made an appreciative noise. Wow, I knew it. You're so, so pretty. Perfect. Jiwon stared at the mirror, unblinking. An unfamiliar woman with alluring eyes, rosy cheeks, and coral-colored lips gazed back. The Jiwon of the past, with her sunken eyes, thick glasses, and bald head covered in a beanie had vanished. A small, egg-shaped lump of, lump of bitterness deep in her heart cracked open. The woman in the mirror smiled. She was pretty. This 27-year-old Jiwon knew what, knew what her past self hadn't. She'd always been pretty and precious, even back then. It's so pretty, she murmured. You're beautiful, Jiwon. For the first time in her life, Jiwon complimented herself. Right? Right? I knew you'd love it. Hugh Yeon was bursting with pride. The stylist's nostrils flared. She was also proud of her work. The two of them left the salon. 
Chatting animatedly and ate lunch at the restaurant Hugh Yeon suggested. It was expensive, but it was worth it. The food was delicious. Where should we go next? Is there something you want to do? Yu Yan dipped her last piece of broccoli in the sauce. Her asparagus and steak had already disappeared long ago. Nothing in particular. Oh, excuse me. Ji Wan felt a vibration and pulled out her phone. She didn't want to, but she answered. Hi, Suman. Hello, Ji Wan. Where are you? Suman asked. I'm eating. Why? What do you mean, why? We made plans to hang out tomorrow. Come dress nicely with the earrings I bought for you, Suman cried. Oh, those earrings. Okay, I'll wear them tomorrow. See you then. Of course she would wear them if Suman told her to. After all, that woman was going to clean up the trash for Jiwon. Click. The call ended. Jiwon closed her phone and smiled. Hugh Yeon, she knew what she wanted to do. Should we go shopping? And that's the end of chapter 12. Oh, wait. Chapter 13. Let's see what the comments say. I love this chapter. This was exactly what she needed for her own self-confidence. It is. It is. Love yourself, Jiwon. You are pretty and gorgeous. That's why Minwon wanted to keep you down. Gosh, this chapter makes me wish I had a friend like Hugh Yeon, and I'm glad that Jiwon is building up her confidence. Make those people who wronged you regret it, girl. Hell yeah. Alright, so we're done with chapters 11, 12, and 13. I hope you enjoyed um, the readings. I hope you had a great month. Um, it's November. Can you believe it? My birthday is this month and I'm pretty excited. I'm going to post a video this month of my update because I did finally start my health journey. And I will try to link the video um, somewhere if you want to check it out. But... Thank you so much for listening. If you did like the video, don't forget forget to like. And if you're not sure what to leave as a comment, um, how about sunglasses or sunglasses, eyeglasses? And I hope that I'll see you in December. It's almost the end of the year. Oh my God. <laughs> but thank you so much. Have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time it is when you're listening. And see you later. Bye. Hey, it's Ashley. Ah, I am see me. And we're back with chapter 14 of the web novel of Marry My Husband. The last time we stopped, uh, our favorite little sis or little co-worker uh, gave Jiwon a makeover and she's about to head to the class reunion and show up and show out and gag everybody and I'm so excited. Uh, if you do like my videos don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and let's get to the story. Okay. Wow, this blouse is so pretty. Hu Yian looked even more excited than when she was eating steak earlier. She was happy as a fish in water. My lifesaver, how do you have such a good eye? If you add this skirt here, it'll be perfect. Jiwon's eyes for clothes was a bit more sophisticated, having come from 2019. When Jiwon chose an item, Hu Yian coordinated an outfit around it, finding colors that suited her. They made a brilliant team. Try this, Hu Yian said. I'll hold your bag. Jiwon took the two third piece two the third two piece suit she'd chosen and entered the fitting room. The wide neck, light beige blouse, and H line skirt fit Jiwon's body like a glove. When she reemerged, Hu Yian made more appreciative noises and clapped like a seal. It's perfect, my lifesaver. Amazing. 
Her reactions were funny, but it was true. Jiwon always thought she was too tall and thin, but the clothes made her look fantastic. Jiwon swiped her credit card without hesitation. I'll wear this out. Please give me the other ones I chose earlier, too. In the past, she would have trembled at the sound of the receipt printing. Now it sounded like music to her ears. The clothes were just a warm-up. The two roamed around Cargo Cell and the mall. They bought clothes, shoes, bags, wallets, and cosmetics. Anything they saw. Jiwon's arms went numb from shopping bags she carried. Wait! Jiwon had been searching for a place to rest when she spotted a store window full of jewelry. I want that. Jiwon pointed out a necklace. It looked like it would match the earrings Suman had given her. Then I'll buy it for you, Hu Yian said. I was going to buy our food, but you paid. But Jiwon knew how much a new employee made. She shook her head. It's fine. You should save up while you're young. <laughs> young? We're only two years apart, Hu Yian giggled. She was only two years older than young Hu Yian. Jiwon still hadn't readjusted to her age, but Hu Yian insisted, so Jiwon let her buy the necklace. As soon as they finished paying, they entered a nearby cafe and plopped into some chairs on the on the terrace. You have come to work exactly like this on Monday. You have to come to work exactly like this on Monday, okay? To shock to shock Mr. Park beyond belief. Hu Yian drank her coffee. Jiwon shook her head. What good would come out of shocking Minwon beyond belief? His eyes have been wandering. Unless you're breaking things off, I refuse to watch someone else steal him. See, people be knowing, girl. People been new. But she didn't know in the past. Jiwon exhaled. My plan is to make him shine so brightly, someone else will take him. Jiwon dug through her mountain of shopping bags, then apologized. I just realized I only bought things for myself. Do you need anything? I'll get you a gift too. Hu Yian grinned. My birthday's coming up soon. You can give me something spectacular then. Jiwon returned the smile and opened a small box to remove the necklace Hu Yian had given her. That's a great pick. It fits your skin tone so well. Jiwon thought so too. That was why she picked it, to wear to the reunion tomorrow. I have plans tomorrow, so I'll wear it then. Thanks. Oh, right. Hu Yian made a noticeable disgusted face. You're meeting Miss Jiang tomorrow, right? Where are you meeting? Where was it again? Hang on. We're meeting at Gangnam for lunch, and then... Jiwon opened her phone, which was filled with messages from Suman and Minwon. It didn't take long to find the message she was looking for. Go Suljun? Apparently, it's a famous barbecue place. Oh, there? Hu Yian sniffed. You know it? I've been there once. It's clean, but I don't think it's that special. Jiwon didn't even remember how the food tasted. She wondered if she had actually eaten any meat. She just shrugged and ended the conversation about Suman by taking a huge bite of dessert as it was served. Jie, it's been so long, Suman said. Uh, she saw Jie Han first and jumped with joy. Jie hugged Suman tightly. You haven't changed at all, you selfish biatch. You're cheating time, huh? What are you talking about? We've only, you've only become prettier. Suman slapped Jie's arm. Oh my gosh, you, 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> Yun Hyu Cho, over here. Suman was Ji Wan's only friend, but Suman had lots of friends and acquaintances. On top of that, she was famous as the kind and pretty girl who took care of the weird girl. Okay. Suman, you're here too? I heard you got a job at a huge company. I guess that was true. I was lucky. I guess Jiwon cheered me on a lot. As Suman smiled, her classmates glanced at each other. You still hang with Jiwon Kang? Jie asked. Suman tilted her head. Of course, she's my best friend. Best friend my ass. She stuck to you like a leech. You only hung out with her because you're too nice. She made you suffer more than a few times. Don't say that. I told you it's okay. Suman's eyes dropped to the floor. Jie and Yu Hyung, Yoon Hyu shook their heads in frustration. Live up to your looks, you pushover. What's Ji Wan doing these days? Does she act human now? Or does she still wear those weird clothes and glasses? I like Ji Wan's natural look, and she's a lot prettier now, Suman replied. 
Yoon Hyu scoffed. <laughs> I can picture it, though I'm curious about the pathetic 2019 version of her. A few of them giggled. Suman looked around and spoke tersely as if upset. Don't be harsh. She wants coming here too. She's coming here? The giggle stopped instantly. Just then, a tall man popped up behind Suman. Jiwon Kang, she's coming? Eek! Suman jumped. The man rubbed her head like he found her cute. What are you so surprised about? Hey, if it isn't Inho Bake, Suman spoke in Busan dialect and nudged his arm. You got taller again. Can't you give me eight? No, just four inches? I can't, little miss, Inho retorted playfully in the same dialect. But what was that? Jiwon's coming? Unho and Jiwon were in the same class for three years straight, but they didn't know each other well. It was only natural. Unho was a popular smart student president, and Jiwon might as well have been a piece of lint. They're from different worlds, Suman concluded. Yeah, I told her the time and location, but she's running a little late. Should I call her? Suman smiled and opened her phone. When she tucked her hair behind her ear, her adorable earrings swayed. Pretty earrings? Where'd you get them? G.A. asked. They were a gift. Oh, wait. Hello? Jiwon? Yes, Suman. The moment the call connected, the noisy reunion went silent. Even the chatty G.A. didn't speak. Suman assumed it was because she said Jiwon's name. Where are you? I'm at the restaurant. If you can't find it, I'll come out to meet you. I'm already here, behind you. The voice came not from the phone, but from right behind her. Suman turned around and her eyes widened. Jiwon? It was Jiwon. She wore skinny jeans that showed off her long legs, which appeared even longer in a pair of thin pumps. On top, she wore a white off-the-shoulder blouse. Looks like I found it. Jiwon snapped her phone shut and dropped it into a designer bag Suman had never seen before. Her lush, wavy hair bounced past her shoulders. Even her face looked completely different. She didn't have her usual dry and flaky skin, cracked lips, or thick glasses that reduced her eyes to beans. This Jiwon had shining skin, long eyelashes, big eyes, and coral-colored lips. A perfect beauty. A faint flowery scent drifted from her, and a pretty necklace accentuated her slender neck. I was almost late because of traffic, but... Jiwon slowly looked around. G.A. and the rest of Suman's friends, Unho, and all of their male classmates gawked at her. Weren't we going to lunch, eat lunch together, just us two? Jiwon asked. Oh, that's... Uh, Suman quickly hid her shock and smiled at her friends. Guys, Jiwon's here. She's my best friend, so she can't miss something like this, can she? No, no one responded. Suman linked her arms through Jiwon's and dragged her to the nearest seat. What happened, Jiwon? I should be asking you that. I saw Busan High School reunion at the entrance. Jiwon's appearance flustered Suman. She sat blankly for a moment. Then she looked down, pouting. Sorry, Jiwon. I thought you wouldn't come if I told you it was a reunion. I really wanted to come together since we're best friends. I still would have come if you told me in advance, Jiwon said. She pulled her cup in front of her. She was thirsty from driving here in the heavy, heavy traffic, but the cup was empty. Excuse me, could I have some? Here, water. Someone from across her extended his long arm to pour her water. Jiwon's heart thudded. Unho bake. The student president she'd had a crush on for three years. He'd replied to her confession of a crush with devastation. Then he confessed his own feelings to Suman not too long after. I'm not that Jiwon anymore. Jiwon sipped the water Unho poured and smiled faintly. Thanks, Unho. Unho was still good looking, but right now he looked like he found the situation awkward. Right. You guys were desk partners in high school, Suman clapped her hands. She was about to say something else when the male classmate next to Unho leaned around him to grin at Jiwon. Is it really you, Jiwon? The one with the thick glasses? Who was this person again? Was he the same was he in the same class? Jiwon nodded. Probably. Whew, the world's improved so much. Jiwon has had quite the transformation. I almost didn't recognize you. He picked up a piece of meat that looked as greasy as him. Give me your number. Let me text you. Do you have a boyfriend? Hey, don't tell me. Just because there's a goalkeeper doesn't mean I can't score, huh? Do you work? Where do you work? 
Sorry, Jiwon couldn't bear his chatter and cut him off, but I don't recognize you. Right. I became more handsome, huh? The man winked and smiled even wider. No, I mean, I really don't recognize you. I don't know who you are. <laughs> the man's jaw snapped shut. Jiwon thought she heard Inho snicker. Suman giggled and pat Jiwon's arm. This is Taesong Kim. Don't you remember? Our class troublemaker. Oh, the slimy looking guy who teased Inho, asking if he was going out with me? Oh, Taesong, sorry. I have a bad memory. Taesong brightened at Jiwon's half-hearted smile. You remember me now, so how about that number? She didn't want to tell him. Jiwon just smiled and tucked her hair behind her ear. Unho glanced at her again. You two are so close. You even have matching earrings. The earrings perfectly suited Jiwon even more, so when paired with the necklace. Yep, those totally fit you. You look like an elementary school kid who stole her mom's earrings, Suman, Taesong teased. Jiwon saw Suman tighten her fist under the table, then she slowly unclenched them. Jiwon stayed seated for a little longer, but then she felt icy glance glazes at her. <gasps> she stood. Suman glanced at her, but didn't speak. She found an empty stall in the bathroom and sat down, just as she had in the past. Out of boredom, she checked her phone and saw a new message. Ji Hyuk Yu, it was the weekend. It was the weekend, though. Mr. Yu, what are you doing? Jiwon wondered if there was a work email she'd forgotten about. Did he need her to do something? I'm at a high school reunion. Sorry, I don't remember. Do you have any orders for me? She didn't get a reply, no matter how long she waited, just as Jiwon shut her phone, wondering if Ji Hyuk had accidentally sent the message to the wrong person. Isn't she incredible? No one wants her here. Who does she think she is coming here? And that's the end of chapter 14. Ooh, I'm so happy. I, it's crazy they include in the story that Inho actually did ask out Suman. That was totally not included in the drama or the novel web tune. So that's a good addition. Because it's just going to have to do more explaining. Because she knows. She didn't know that before. So we'll see. Um, some of the top comments. You look like an elementary school kid who stole her mom's earrings, Suman. Absolutely roasted and deserved. True, true. All right, girls. It's about time y'all had someone to put in your place. To put you in your place. And it's payback time. This chapter was so good. Ah, so good. Uh, I will be back in just a moment for chapter 15, which is called The Reunion's End. And I want to know what else Ji Hyuk has to say to her because he didn't say anything else after she said, hey, I'm like at a class reunion. What's up, boss? <laughs> Uh, anyways, I'll be back. I'm going to try to do four chapters, maybe five in this uh, video. We'll see. But yes, 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 yes. I'll be back for chapter 15. Hello, I'm back for chapter 15. Let's get into it. it, it. The reunions end. Isn't she incredible? No one wants her here. Who does she think she is coming here? With the sound of multiple people packing into the bathroom, the gossiping began. Right? She probably begged Suman to take her along. All she can show off... Also, she can show off her fake bag and fake face. She must have fixed with plastic surgery. Three or four people snickered at G.A.'s words. yu Hyu. Yon Hyu grumbled. Suman is so nice. She took care of Ji Won, even though Ji Won made her suffer all through high school. Now she's still hanging out with Ji Won, even after getting a job. I would have cut her out of my life already. The earrings she's wearing today, she probably bought them to copy Suman. Ji scoffed. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have been friends with her in the first place. Suman offered so much in high school because Suman suffered so much in high school because of her. 
Wait. G.A. The first person suddenly lowered her voice. Jiwon left early. What if she went to the bathroom? Everyone stopped talking. Jiwon felt the dirty glares of her classmates through the door. She remembered being 27. All she'd known how to do was study. She had built up walls around her and filled her world with Suman and Minwon alone. Back then, Jiwon was a coward who didn't dare to kick the door open and defend herself. Unlike now. Yeah, I'm in here. Jiwon opened the door and looked at Jie. To be exact, she looked her up and down. Don't worry about me. Finish what you are saying. What did Suman do in high school? As Jiwon... Was Jiwon always this tall? Jie was taken aback and hesitated. Then she collected her bearings. You're so shameless. Do you think Suman is a pushover just because she's nice? Who was the pushover? <laughs> Jiwon snorted. Continue. Continue what? Jie glowered at Jiwon. Talk about what happened in high school. You didn't finish what you were saying. Yoon Hyu, who had been quiet, stepped forward. What else? Obviously, it's about Unho. Are you going to claim you don't remember? Unho? How is he a part of this? I don't remember. What about him? Jiwon frowned at the unexpected turn in conversation. Seeing that Jie slowly crept back, Yoon Hyu cleared her throat. Suman liked Unho. After you found out, you told her not to confess to Unho, since you always liked him, didn't you? Suman took care of a friendless loser, and you paid her back. You paid back her favor with ingratitude. Now you're pretending you don't even remember. Yoon Hyu glared at her. <laughs> Jiwon's expression crumpled. She dug through her memory. This is how you've thought of me all this time. All she could recall was Unho's disgusted look, followed by Suman's tearful voice. Unho said he likes me. I'm sorry, Jiwon. That's what Suman said? Jiwon asked in a somber voice. Yes. Do you know how much Suman suffered throughout high school because of that? So this is why she'd been cursed at. The reason why people threw trash at her for three years. Jiwon almost laughed. <laughs> it's true that I liked Unho, but Suman never said she liked Unho, and I certainly never told her not to confess her feelings. Her classmates exchanged glances. Jiwon crossed her arms and wondered what they would say next. You might say you don't remember, but Suman suffered in high school, G.A. shouted. She was so hurt that it disrupted her studies. But you studied diligently, all by yourself, and went to college in Seoul. If you had a conscience, let Suman go, hmm? All Jiwon had done during her school days was focus on academics. She'd even managed to find joy in studying. As a result of her hard work, she went to a prestigious university in Seoul. Somehow, even that became the object of mockery. Do you think she'd let Suman go? Suman's just just got into U and K. She'll probably stick closer to Suman than ever, thinking of ways to leech more from her. Yu Hu, Yun Hu muttered, dumbfounded. Jiwon opened her handbag and pulled out a business card about U and K. U and K Food Marketing Division One Section Chief Jiwon Kang. The business card proclaimed. How do you think Suman got into G UNK, Jiwon said. Suman graduated from a mid-tier college in Busan. She should have been rejected in the first round. School background has, was still improved. School background was still important now, but it had been even more vital in 2009. Even graduates from prestigious schools might get rejected in the first hiring round at large corporations if their schools weren't based in the capital. But contract employees sometimes get into the company with a recommendation. Anyone who makes the ranks of sex in chief can start making recommendations, and I'm the one who recommended Suman. The room fell silent as a grave. As it should. Y'all gonna quit fucking with my girl, okay? Jie reached for Jiwon's card, but Jiwon had no intention of giving it to her. Before Jie could touch it, Jiwon returned her card to her bag and snapped it shut. As you can see, I didn't have time to get plastic surgery on my face. I'm too busy with work, but Jie's bag is a fake one. Everyone turned to look at the bag in Jie's hand. Jie's face turned red as a tomato. She shook her bag in Jiwon's face. What are you talking about? Are your eyes broken? This is on. Authentic. I bought it myself at the department store. 
My mistake. I thought you bought it fake since you brought it up. Jiwon shrugged with a crisp smile. Jiwon, you're absurd. That's all you have to say after accusing someone of being a fake? What else am I supposed to do? She blinked. You should at least apologize. So you're aware of that. Her smile vanished. Then why aren't you apologizing to me? You bullied me for three years just because of what Suman said. What? Jie stepped back. Jiwon bent down to look Jie in the eye. She saw it all now. The bullying was nothing. Jie was smaller than she thought. She couldn't harm Jiwon, not anymore. Show me the receipt for your bag, then I'll apologize, since I was wrong. But will you also apologize if I bring Suman and reveal it all a lie? Reveal it was all a lie? You've grown up, Jiwon, Jie glared. Yeah, I grew up, but you're the same. It's been a while since we graduated, but you're still bullying people. Jiwon straightened and washed her hands in the sink. Then she looked in the mirror. Jie, Yoon Hyu, and her other classmates stared at her like she had lost her mind. I know none of you intended to apologize. If you were the type, you wouldn't have been talking behind my back about something as immature as a high school crush from 10 years ago. Ooh. Jiwon wiped her hands on a paper towel and turned around. I'm off now. It has been nice seeing you and I hope we never meet again. Hey, Jiwon, Jie called. I know you're calling my name, but you don't actually have anything to say, so shut up. <gasps> Dude! Damn. Okay, okay, girl. Ignored, the fuming Jie closed the door. She had no business here anymore. She could go home and rest. But when she passed by the men's bathroom, Unho suddenly blocked her way. You're leaving, Jiwon? Yeah. Jiwon responded. She tried to walk past him, but Unho moved into her path again. Then let's go together. We can have some coffee. Why would I drink coffee with you? Jiwon asked, flabbergasted. Unho must have forgotten how he responded to her letter of confession with disgust. I, I mean, Unho stammered. Jiwon! Oh, you're here too, Unho? Suman ran up. Oh, it's Suman. My bad. I did the wrong voice. <clears throat> Jiwon! Oh, you're here too, Unho. Suman ran up the hallway and peeked over Unho's shoulder. I came to find you, Jiwon. You said you were going to the bathroom. What took you so long? Oh, I was talking to the girls inside, she said. Girls? What girls? What were they talking about? Uncertainty flashed across Suman's face. Jiwon pretended not to notice and nodded at the bathroom. Go on in. They're still there. Suman swallowed. What did she talk about with the girls? She wanted to ask Jiwon, but Unho was standing right there, so she couldn't. Why are they chatting in the bathroom when we have seats outside? Hang on, Jiwon, I'll go get them. Suman giggled and opened the door to the bathroom. Hmm. Her classmates were in the middle of a serious discussion. They all looked at Suman in unison. What are you guys doing here? Suman asked. What else? Jia walked over and closed the door. We're talking about you. <gasps> that was I'm sorry that's not that wasn't Suman that was me being shocked <laughs> Suman had a very bad feeling she laughed and nudged GA's arm <laughs> what about me tell me too GA laughed artificially <laughs> I heard you're a contract employee at UNK food and that you barely got the job thanks to Jiwon's recommendation recommendation is that true Suman's eyes widened. She had never told anyone before. Even her parents thought Suman was a full-time worker at UNK. Who, who said that? Jiwon? She even showed us her second section chief business card. Why don't you show us your business card while you're on, we're on the subject and all? If you're a full-time employee, you must have a business card. Suman froze. She'd taken a picture of her employee card when she got hired and posted it on social media. Her friends had beg begged to know how she'd gotten in. She said she'd written a good cover letter. She had even given them tips, but she'd never said anything about being a contract employee or getting a referral from Jiwon. When did I say I was a full-time employee? I never said that, Suman snapped. Senna, who had been the most envious of Suman and asked her the most questions, snorted. <sighs> You said you got in through open recruitment. If you did, you'd be a full-time employee. Are you kidding me? What do I do? What do I do? Suman racked her brain. I must have been confused, she said. I had an interview for another company through an open, open recruitment. At the same time, it wasn't intentional, really. 
a ridiculous excuse. Senna had sucked up to Suman to try and get tips about hire the hiring process. She felt betrayed. What the heck? Every time I bought you food and coffee asking about the process, that's what you always said. That's what you always said. Is there something wrong with your head? Then the other thing Jiwon said must be true too, Jie murmured. What are you talking about? What did she say? Suman asked as casually as she could inside her heart racing. You told us Jiwon ordered you not to confess your feelings to Unho because Jiwon liked him, but Jiwon said she never did that. Did Jiwon go mad? Suman forced a smile with dry lips. <laughs> You're still talking about that? We were so young. We were in our late 20s. We're in our late 20s now. I don't even remember what happened. Wow, Suman. Did you lie to get people to pity you since Jiwon couldn't tell anyone? We got played by you for three years, but all you can say is you don't remember? Do you already have dementia in your late 20s? Jiwon was always the recipient of their classmates' disgust, pity, and scorn. Due to that, Suman had gotten along with the rest of their classmates. They loved her, seeing her as a good-natured and sweet. How Jiwon is, not you shady bitch. <laughs> Now that the unwritten rule had been broken, Suman felt disconcerted. It's not a lie. I keep work stuff a secret because you all hate Jiwon so much. I didn't want Jiwon badmouthed again. Why do you think Jiwon got badmouthed? All because of you. <gasps> Yu Hyun shook her finger at Suman. Suman blinked damp eyes. How is that because of me? I'm Jiwon's friend. Then call her right now. There's no reason for her to lie. Not after she's been so horribly bad-mouthed, as you say. Suman crossed her arms. Stop! Why do you keep making things hard for Jiwon? Jiwon, 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 Yu and Hugh cried. Don't you understand? Your lies started all of this. We bad-mouthed Jiwon because of you. Do you know how many times we got in trouble for that? All because you played us? Suman's head went blank as the entire room turned on her. She scowled and raised her voice. Why did you badmouth her? I always told you to stop. Why are you shitting on me? You're the ones who badmouthed Jiwon because you wanted to. Suman realized what she had said after it was too late. You're really deranged, G.A. glowered. It's impossible to get through to you. But as you said, these are past events and we're adults. Let's move on. Don't ever call me again. I high school reunion, you're full of shit. G.A. shoved Suman aside and stormed out. The rest of their classmates followed, glaring at Suman in disgust. Left alone, Suman leaned against the wall and slid to the floor. She sh shouldn't have brought Jiwon. Belated regret and resentment burned in her chest. Pulling her phone out, she clicked the call button. The familiar dial tone rang for a while, then it ended. After informing her the number couldn't be reached, she tried again, several times, but she received the same message over and over. When her legs finally went numb, Suman struggled upright and re-emerged. The restaurant was e empty. Not even Jiwon had waited for her. Suman picked up her bag, lying abandoned on a chair. She tried calling again, but it didn't connect. Ooh, tore her ass up. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Okay, let's see. What the top comments were. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I accidentally clicked off on it. Okay. Just like Jiwon said, the same events always have to happen to someone, and in this case, it happened to Suman. She was left in the bathroom and found herself entirely alone when she reemerged, taking her bag from her chair. This is karma at work. Oh, for sure. Suman's BS finally started catching up to her. If you don't want to be in that position, don't be a liar in the first place. Eat shit, Suman, fake bitch. Damn. <laughs> oh, so good, so good. Okay, so that was the end of chapter 15. Um, I really liked how 
the confrontation went down in the bathroom, like basically all in the bathroom and not in front of their classmates. It was just the people that were involved, even though I'm pretty sure the whole class was involved in bullying Jiwon. But I'm hoping, I'm happy that they figured out Suman's a piece of shit and they're not going to listen to her, talk to her, hang out with her anymore. So she can be alone how she used to do Jiwon. But that's it for chapter 15. And I'll be going into chapter 16 next. And I hope you have a good day, night, evening, whatever time it is when you're listening. Bye. <laughs>